Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to Garage 42 where I store my vehicles and welcome back to the E39 M5. I'm swapping out of my FL5 Honda Civic Type R, just got an oil change done on that and we'll have to do a 10,000 mile update on this car. I can't believe I've already put that many miles on it but it's been a great little workhorse. But for the next week, I am gonna start stacking some miles on my M5. I've actually gotta make two trips up to Maine. Not too, too far. We're going from Boston to Portland, essentially. Now this car is a 2001, it has about 81,000 miles on it. This is probably the last of the great BMWs, in my opinion. I do love the E92 M3, but I think the build quality and timeless look of this E39 is just so striking and impressive to me. I'm glad I've kept this car. Now, up front, there's plenty of little marks all over this hood. We could retouch this at some point, do a full respray if we really wanted to go all out, but the carbon black looks pretty good. And then my buddy Ryan up here just did a nice little headlight restoration for me. And these were really brutal. So the fact that they look this good is wonderful because I feel like the angel eye headlights on these E39 M5s is one of those defining features. And these now look nice and clear. And that makes the car look a heck of a lot new. So let's jump in and take it on the road because we have some miles to drive. Let's start her up. Key in the ignition. Oh yes, 82,004 miles. And we'll be saying goodbye to the M5, or sorry, to the Type R for a little bit. I'm excited to put some miles on this just because I love this car. already feels silky smooth in comparison to the Honda. The Honda is so tight. The Honda is so twitchy. I mean, this certainly handles, but my goodness, in comparison to a Type R, this is uh, definitely a lot more forgiving. So what's up next for this car? Well, like in the imminent future, uh, a battery and a brake fluid flush. In the winter, I would love to do a full suspension refresh on this car. Not because it's horrific or sloppy or anything, but I just know that over time, bushings and these struts are definitely worn. And it's not making any like unsavory noises. It still handles great, but I would love to really put some effort into this to make it feel a little more refreshed, a little newer. And I think that would make this car feel so much more expensive. If you don't remember, we did full cooling system everything. Water pump, radiator, lines, thermostat, all the goodies. Um, we've sealed it up, so we've got rear main seal done. We've got valve cover gaskets, all the stuff that was causing this thing to be like a little oil leaky, typical BMW. I've taken care of that. And I think it can be a tough pill to swallow sometimes when you when you put money like that into these cars. But you need to treat these as just things you love versus investments. Because unless you're planning on flipping this car, then the money that goes into that sort of maintenance needs to be negligible. As long as you can afford it, you should do it. And I think if you treat it like, well, am I gonna get that money back if I put $10,000 into like refreshing all this stuff or, you know, God forbid, like a full engine out service, all that kind of stuff well then you'll just never be happy because it's not gonna it's not gonna come back to you. I took a wrong turn, so you're getting extra extra views in this weird little no local neighborhood. Hello, spooky times, we like that. Shit, are you a dead end? Now there is like a level of mechanical perfection and aesthetic per perfection that needs to be decided when you're operating vehicles like this. To me, I always want them to be like mechanically sound. I want this car to always be able to run and be able to go long distances without any questions. Let's get it out to its proper home, the highway. It's always just such a remarkable difference when you get in a car that was designed for speed, that was designed for grand touring versus a car that's designed for like a racetrack. And there's something about this car that just feels so at home 
cranking along on these motorways. They feel, it feels so good. I gotta go find a little bit of fuel, then we can make our way up to Portland. Had really bad luck with Subarus today. First one tried to run me off the road because they didn't look when they changed lanes. And now this one is boring. And not great at merging. So a little tip with merging. Use the whole merge. Just use the road that you've got. You don't need to, you don't need to like jump over a lane early, you know, unless you're already going 90 miles an hour, but it, most people aren't. Just use the merge, please. Now I've also heard for a brake upgrade, apparently FK8 and FL5 brake kits fit perfectly on the E39. I have done zero research on that. Essentially someone told me that, I maybe like Googled it and was like, oh, I guess so. That would be very cool because what I would love to do is have the exact same Brembo calipers on the Type R that I have on the M5 and I think it would look pretty cool. I don't know if they'll clear these wheels. That's obviously the biggest thing because I think that the stock wheels on the E39 M5 are the best looking wheels on the E39 M5. Sure, you can go and put some BBS or HRE wheels, spend all the money, but some about these look perfect. These wheels are not perfect. When I bought this car, these wheels were essentially square. I remember driving this home and thinking, oh no, what have I done? There's so much vibration. This is brutal. Like the seats were violently shaking and I brought them up to Rim Pro when they were in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. Not really like a shout out to them, but they are the place to go. And they, they, they make you sign this release like you're getting surgery. It says like, look, we're gonna do our thing and we're gonna try to re-round your wheels, but they might crack and that's on you, baby. So I did, I signed it away and they worked and they're pretty round and they're balanced for the most part right now, I think, and we're, we're okay. What would be great though is like these wheels are not in perfect shape. They are obviously used to be square, now are mostly round, but also the paint on them are peeling a little bit. Not only if you look really closely or if you're being like really stingy about like, Ugh, it's not the best looking E39 F5 I've ever seen, then you'll notice it. But if you're just like letting it go, you won't even see it. But I would like to get like a fresh new pair or new set of these wheels because I just think it would look really good. I love main roads because they're 70 miles an hour on 95. It's this beautiful like undulating road, paved really well, great foliage on the side, and people scream. Like we're just kind of cranking along at 80 and you barely pass people because even the trucks are doing 80, which actually I'm kind of wondering how they can even do that because our Freightliner is limited at 75. So everyone's tuning their trucks apparently. Now I've got the car back home. We're gonna go back up to Maine in a couple days, but we just got this new little steam cleaner and I think this car is probably pretty disgusting. I've owned it for quite a while and I've never steam cleaned this car. I took out the carpets, which 100% need to be replaced because look at the back side of this. That's so gross. Um, and yeah, that, like look, this is this is the remains of that carpet on the back side. Not ideal, but um, I think we can probably clean up these carpets quite a bit and just get some of the grossness out of them. So let's give this a shot. Oh yeah. It's gross, but you can see all the dirt and stuff getting lifted out of this carpet. Very satisfying. And then we're gonna have to let this air out for a while just because it's gonna be a little damp and I don't want this car to get all grody and nasty.
It's time to do a brake fluid flush. And you guys, it's been a while. Not even gonna tell you how long, but I think the color of the brake fluid might tell you how long it has been. I'm really not proud of this. I'm really not proud of this. But yeah, that's, that's the brake fluid that came out. It's basically chocolate syrup. So, thrilled that we're doing this, but while we're in here, haha, <laughs> Definitely confirming that we need to redo suspension components because this strut, obviously toast, there's all kinds of weeping that's probably bubbled up from there. So that's toast. Uh, and then taking a look at bushings. I mean, everything in here is gonna be pretty old and worn. Um, I'm not sure how hardcore I wanna go on this because you know, what we can do is we can go really nuts and we can replace literally everything. Or we can take a little bit of a conservative approach financially and just kind of do spring struts and some of these bits. But it's pretty easy to get to the brake fluid reservoir here because basically you just pop off this cabin air filter and boom, there we are. You can tell that this car has never seen winter. It's really pretty clean as far as like rust and corrosion is concerned, but Little spots here and here tell you that when it was living in a barn, not in Garage 42, and a couple times it lived out on the driveway in the winters, back before I had good storage. Um, yeah, rodents would definitely get in here. And you can see they brought their little nuts in here, so we're gonna try to vacuum out all this stuff. But one thing that's really surprising is right here, our brake booster, Lucas. Lucas, Prince of Darkness is the is the brake booster in an E39 M5. Who knew? Certainly not I. Brakes are flushed and bled and happy. Let's take it out for a little drive, make sure it's okay. I always wanna do the first little brake check when you do anything with your brakes, even if it's something simple as bleeding, and just make sure before you get on the road proper. All right, well, while we're going uphill, we can test these brakes. They're holding on a hill, pedal firm, not going to the floor, which means we're not leaking. Good deal, all right. Well, I'm gonna go take this out around the block. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I am excited to do a little suspension overhaul on my M5. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.